This Soviet officer captured two small dogs and threw them under a moving tank. The mother dog, witnessing this, immediately broke free from her leash and recklessly rushed under the tank. The Soviet officer's motive behind this action was to train military dogs to destroy German tanks. However, this behavior sparked discontent among many dog owners. Some were walking their dogs and decided to leave, only to be surprised as the Soviet officer directly fired warning shots and threatened everyone, stating that anyone who refused to send their own dogs into battle would have to take their place instead. The dogs are then confined without food until conditioned to rush under tanks for sustenance. To overcome the fear of tank engine noises, soldiers are ordered to start tanks at full throttle while the dogs are kept away. Dog owners are also commanded to run under the tanks to further desensitize the animals. The harsh training aims to make the dogs fearless in the face of tanks, preparing them for deployment with explosives. A man named Vyacheslav Volkov, unwilling to sacrifice his dog prins, attempts to escape with it. However, he is caught by his captain who warns him that desertion results in execution. Unable to flee, Vyacheslav Volkov seeks an alternative by presenting a wounded soldier's certificate and requesting retirement for himself and Prinz. He even offers to go to the front lines in place of Prinz if retirement is not granted. He was willing to sacrifice himself to save Prinz because nobody knew what the dog meant to Vyacheslav Volkov. Originally a pilot, Vyacheslav Volkov was reassigned to a forest as a ranger after being injured. During a patrol, he saved a shepherd dog from two wolves and named it Prinz, not realizing that this dog would completely change his life. One day, while patrolling the forest with a hunting rifle, Vyacheslav Volkov was ambushed by a German spy. The spy then shot off his shotgun and forced him to a tree with a dagger. Just in the nick of time, Prinz arrived just in time and bit the spy's arm. Vyacheslav Volkov then took the opportunity to pick up the shotgun and managed to capture the spy and hand him over to the military. Thanks to Prinz's help, Vyacheslav Volkov not only saved his life but also earned military merit. They became inseparable, sharing meals, sleep, and playtime. The bond between Vyacheslav Volkov and Prinz deepened. However, during World War II, with the intense German offensive, Vyacheslav Volkov, eager to defend his homeland, joined the military with Prinz. Due to his injuries, he was assigned to camp duties, handling logistics and assisting medics. One day, while chatting with a doctor, a German bomb The logistics department was heavily bombed, but Vyacheslav Volkov, who narrowly escaped the airstrike, loaded the wounded onto trucks. He took cover under a truck, wielding a rifle to provide cover. Despite being away from the battlefield for a long time, Vyacheslav Volkov's marksmanship remained sharp, single-handedly. He delayed the German forces, picking them off one by one. However, before he could catch his breath, a missile struck the truck above him, and the powerful impact knocked him unconscious. Vyacheslav Volkov thought he would meet his end in that explosion. Unexpectedly, Prince sprinted towards an approaching medical vehicle, blocking its path. Initially reluctant, the leader of the medical team refused to acknowledge Prince. However, medic Nina insisted on accompanying Prince to assess the situation. Prince led Nina to Vyacheslav Volkov once again, saving his life. Unfortunately, Vyacheslav Volkov's leg was severely injured and had to be amputated. In the medical unit, Prinz became close to the soldiers. Everyone was moved by Prinz's daring acts to save his owner, and Nina gradually fell in love with the man who sacrificed himself for his country and comrades. Soon, Vyacheslav Volkov's physical condition improved enough for him to walk with crutches. However, the Soviet Union was struggling in the face of the overwhelming German military force, with tanks pushing the Soviet forces back. In a bid to contribute to the defense of the country, Vyacheslav Volkov once again prepared to join the war, this time with Prinz. However, instead of being assigned to the front lines, he was sent to a military dog training base. It seemed that this time Prinz could also contribute to the nation's defense. To Vyacheslav Volkov's surprise, after some training, the officers did not assign Prinz to search and rescue or mine detection duties. Instead, Prinz was enrolled in anti-tank dog special training. The Soviet Union, facing the formidable German armored forces, resorted to primitive methods using living bombs to destroy tanks one-on-one. -on -one. Building a human suicide squad was challenging, and humans were slower in action compared to military dogs. Many times, soldiers were shot by machine gunners before reaching the tanks. Therefore, the military had to conduct special training for military dogs, turning them into suicide squads to destroy tanks. After overcoming their fear, the captain began attaching detonation devices to the dogs. Once they successfully reached under the tank, the antenna switch would trigger the mechanism, causing the bomb to explode immediately. 
Witnessing this, Vyacheslav Volkov felt a profound sense of discomfort. Prinz was his savior, and he couldn't bear to watch Prinz execute a mission destined for death. So, after a fierce struggle, he took his disability card to the head of the military district and tried to get out of the army by proving his disability. But the soldier took one look at him and turned Vyacheslav Volkov away, mocking him for betraying his country for the sake of a dog. Vyacheslav Volkov, in a gloomy mood, returned to the military camp, filled with increasing anger. He finally couldn't hold back and lifted his crutch, venting his emotions on the camp facilities. Upon hearing this, Nina rushed to the camp overnight to console Vyacheslav Volkov. In times of national crisis, every living being was a potential ally. Prinz was not just his beloved dog but also a comrade in arms in the struggle to defend the homeland. If the Soviet Union were to be defeated, both he and Prinz would become captives. Ultimately, under Nina's persuasion, Vyacheslav Volkov had to abandon the idea of leaving the army. The next day during training, reluctantly, he snatched the dog food from the colonel's hands, sprinted and collapsed under a tank. Prinz, seeing this, quickly ran up and joined him under the tank. However, Prinz wasn't interested in the bowl of dog food in Vyacheslav Volkov's hands. It simply wanted to rescue its owner. Soon after, the colonel prepared to deploy the trained Prinz and other anti-tank dogs into the battlefield. Helpless, Vyacheslav Volkov had no choice but to bring Prinz to the battlefield. They now faced an entire German squad in four intimidating tanks. As the battle began, the colonel instructed the trainers to attach explosive devices to the anti-tank dogs, aiming to take down the German tanks first. Unexpectedly, as soon as one of the military dogs was released, it charged straight towards the Soviet tank. It seemed they hadn't trained the dogs on how to distinguish friend from foe. By the time the colonel realized the situation, it was too late. The military dog was too fast. And before the soldiers could aim, it dove under the tank, blowing up the only Soviet tank into pieces. Frustrated, the colonel initially considered ending the lives of the trainers but regained his composure. He dropped his gun, and the rest of the anti-tank dogs were released. The first trainer tearfully released his dog, which, like a lightning bolt, charged through the German gunfire and destroyed the first German tank. The colonel displayed a pleased expression, while the trainer of the military dog wept bitterly, gripping his fists in sorrow and anger. The trainer couldn't bear to witness his beloved dog being sent to hell. Nevertheless, the war persisted, and with the colonel's command, the second wave of anti-tank dogs rushed into the battlefield, successfully destroying the second tank. Unexpectedly, at this moment, a tragedy occurred. The German forces had reached the high ground. The colonel intended to detonate the third tank, but the third trainer, unable to bear the sight of his beloved dog's sacrifice, defied orders and removed the explosive pack from the military dog. He intended to sacrifice himself as a human bomb. However, humans couldn't match the speed of professional military dogs, and given the large target, the trainer was shot by the German machine gunner after taking only a few steps. Witnessing this, the colonel tried to intervene but got injured and fell to the ground. He looked back at the soldiers still fighting with eyes that transformed from fear to unparalleled determination. Eventually, to crush it, and resolutely met his end along with the German tank. Despite the sacrifice, there was still one German tank left, closing in on the camp and launching an attack. As the military camp was on the verge of being obliterated by artillery fire, Nina was caught in the explosion. Vyacheslav Volkov, bewildered and ready to fight the Germans, attempted to stand but was immediately hit. In this critical moment, Prinz suddenly stepped forward. It stared fixedly at the German tank. Then, facing the hail of bullets, charged towards it. The last German tank was successfully destroyed. And Prinz, with its own life, saved Vyacheslav Volkov and the Soviet camp. Afterward, Vyacheslav Volkov retired with honors, bringing the honor that belonged to Prinz back to his hometown, even in his silver-haired years. Vyacheslav Volkov would tell the story of himself and Prinz to anyone who would listen. At that moment, Prinz had become a true hero in Vyacheslav Volkov's heart a hero who defended the homeland. This is a film adapted from a true story. In the early stages of World War II, the Soviet Union, facing technologically superior German tanks, trained around 40,000 anti-tank dogs. These dogs destroyed over 300 German tanks, achieving remarkable success. Fortunately, by 1942, the Soviet military industry had recovered, producing advanced tanks, and the era of anti-tank dogs came to an end. However, the sacrifices they made for peace would surely leave a vivid mark in history. All things have spirits, and dogs willingly sacrificing themselves for their owners is a testament to their unconditional love. In the eyes of dogs, their owners are their everything. No commentary can replace the original footage. If you enjoyed this film, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I am a movie enthusiast. Looking forward to meeting you again in the next film.